So the reason why I reached out is because I'm a federal employee who is on leave without pay because of my medical decision. Um, and as you probably know, the federal government uh, made that a requirement as of October 6, 2021. And um, I went through all the processes uh, requesting for um uh, accommodation through prohibited grounds was one and the other was through um, religious grounds and both were denied and when I came back to work because I did take some sick leave between, between the time that they implemented the mandate um, I was directed not to my direct supervisor but to our director of our section so she's like the boss of my boss's boss kind of thing and normally you deal with your direct supervisor for all of this but it it seems like the processes all kind of went out the window and so I was de dealing with our our director of our entire section directly <clears throat> and uh, she was also new to our our section so um i have never met her in person or anything like that before so um i went through the process of when i came back from sick, sick leave i tried to return to work and she requested that i provide a uh, letter from my doctor to return to work which i was never advised of and so um it became like kind of you know uh, a back and forth between our emails just stating like where does it say I have to do this and can you please provide to me the information like in the labor code or in my contract where it states I need a doctor's note to return to work so it just was a difficult process coming back to work and then um, once I was back at work I requested leave that I had a cured so like that I'd earned and she denied it so I submitted a grievance through my union and it was a big process and and that was kind of where I ran into the first kind of uh, conflict of interest I guess because I had submitted the grievance uh, to my union and then there's a hearing a grievance hearing in that process and unbeknownst to me she was heading the grievance hearing. So here I have a grievance against her and she's heading the hearing and making the decisions. And it really caught me off guard because I wasn't advised of that. And I've never been through this process before at all. And I asked my union rep, like, I don't understand how she can be the perpetrator and also be the decision maker behind it. And, um, he was just like, well, it's up to the employer and we're, we have no discretion to tell them how to to manage any of that. So obviously, um, I mean, it was after that, it was just like a long drawn out process. And finally the resolution was that she was gonna pay out my leave at the end of March and not allow me to take it, but I settled on that. So that was one grievance. And then the other grievance was her denying my request for accommodation under prohibited grounds. And I mean, I had that denied within five days of submitting it, which is pretty unheard of. So, <clears throat> so I was fine and submitted another request for accommodation, which also got denied within three weeks, also very quickly, um, and ended up on leave without pay March 1st. When I left on, on leave without pay, I composed an email stating like, I'm leaving and farewell kind of thing. And, um, it was the same day that Ontario lifted the vaccine mandate, as you know. So I just, I mentioned that and I mentioned other facts regarding like, um, you know, the history of, of some of the pharmaceutical companies that are providing these vaccines, such as like horrendous lawsuits and all that stuff against them. Um, and it was all whatever facts, but anyway, so then went on leave without pay thinking, well, whatever, here I am on leave without pay, like so many of my other um, colleagues. Anyway, then this past Monday, I receive a letter from her stating that she's investigating me on misconduct. And the reasons listed are one, that email, two, my attendance 
at the Freedom Convoy P protest 2022 and um, showing private confidential police information, which all I did was videotape what was happening. And if the police's face or their name or badge number were on that video because I was videotaping, like I didn't state anybody's private confidential information. As far as I'm concerned, that's a public, you know, protest. <laughs> And, uh, and also posting on social media um, against the vaccine mandate and I guess against our prime minister. Um, but I, anyway, so that like really caught me off guard. And obviously I went to my union and stated what is going on. And uh, they got back to me within a couple of days, which I was thinking they weren't gonna get back to me. And they just said that uh, okay, just ask her for a timing and when the hearing will happen. And and when I did that, I asked her for the information, like like the specific things that she had against me, as well as whether or not she was like managing the investigation and holding the hearing or if it was an impartial person. And that's when I found out again that she's managing this investigation and she's also holding the hearing and I have two grievances against her and I feel like you know she's harassing me like because of these other grievances and when I went back to the union basically there was like oh there's nothing we can do about it and I'm trying to contact the government again to sub submit a complaint of harassment but I'm just the whole reason why I contacted you guys is because this to me is like what they possibly will do with you know, other people in my situation on Leave It Okay because how many of us either attended the convoy or donated or, you know, um, some way posted things against the vaccine mandate because we're all affected by it. And and is this like their way around, regardless of if they drop the federal mandate or if we win our court cases, that they're going to be able to like go into our social media, which to me, I thought was, you know, outside of work and and kind of like persecute us that way.